morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis and acne and eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. Let us help you change your life today. Let us help you change the lives of loved ones or family members or workmates today as well. Our number is 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, or my blogs, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. We're looking for business builders. We're looking for folks who want to help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. We're looking for folks who want to make some money doing it. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, and... Somebody at the Brightside Ben phone team can help you out. If you want to purchase any of my skincare products, my skin health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our retinol gel, our omega-6 healing cream, or our truth balm or truth serum. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. And we are talking about the skin. We've been talking about the skin now for a little bit, a couple of months. We'll continue talking about the skin. When it comes to having healthy skin, everybody wants healthy, beautiful skin. Billions and billions and billions of dollars are spent on mostly ineffective, mostly antiquated, anachronistic skin care products or waxes and oils and preservatives. And it seems like we have this never-ending, insatiable appetite for more and more skin care creams and lotions and wrinkle products. And for the most part, and I've been doing this now since 1983, folks, for the most part, they're all based on the same crapola, the same ingredients, the same tired old active materials. There's, I go to the skincare ingredient shows once or twice a year and never anything new, all basically the same stuff. Because as it turns out, there really isn't a lot you could do to the skin topically. Not that you can't do anything. There are some things you can do. And it all involves upregulation, stimulating the good stuff. Having healthy skin, like having a healthy body, means turning things on, increasing the production of things. For over a century, women have been tricked, deceived into using creams and lotions and (laughs) collagen and uh, various active ingredients on their skin, mostly ineffective. You can't just rub a product on your skin and expect your skin to be healthier and more attractive. And all this has to do with the main concept that we talk about here on the Bright Side, and that's the idea that health is really not complicated. It's really simple. Whether it's healthy skin or healthy bones or healthy muscles or healthy brain or healthy anything in the body, the body's perfect. It has a finely tuned, it's, it's been finely tuned, it's been honed, it's been refined, it's been evolved over the course of hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of years to be perfect. Medicine would imply, doctoring would imply that the body's not perfect, that it's chaotic, that it's random. It's not chaotic. It's not random. We wouldn't have survived a million years in this form if our bodies and our biochemistry were random and chaotic. Medicine wants us to think it is because it profits on this. It profits on the belief that it's out of our control. To address health, or rather the lack of health, All we got to do is see what our illnesses and our diseases have in common, even if it's something cosmetic like dry skin, even if it's rosacea or eczema, even if it's not life-threatening, even if it's pimples, something 
whether it's zits or eczema or high blood pressure or cancer or heart disease or whatever, all of these diseases have something in common. In medical school, doctors study the thousands and thousands of different diseases, but they don't study what they all have in common. They study how they're all different, but they don't study what is in common. And until we figure out what our illnesses have in common, we are going to have to resort to failed and exploitative and really anti-humanity healing strategies of drugging the body, poisoning the body, ablating the body, destroying the body, carving the body, radiating the body. How the heck does this ever become part of healing? Think about all the procedures that happen via, via the, uh, uh, the medical model in terms of helping heal the body. They all involve killing it. Whether it's through drugs or surgery or carving it up, whatever, all our medical strategies involve suppression and blocking and anti and removing and radiating and destroying. And it all comes because we don't understand the disease process. And we don't understand the disease process because we're focusing on the differences of all diseases, not what they have in common. So what do all diseases have in common? What is it that separates dis-ease, whether it's skin disease or internal disease or mental disease or any disease? What is it that separates the disease state from the ease state, the health state. Underneath all disease, you will find a body in duress. That's the word disease, disease, out of ease, in duress. And the cause of duress in the body is stagnation, period. Stagnation of the fluids. That's disease right there, folks. Stagnation of the fluids. Something is getting into the fluids. I always say something's getting into the body, but what I really mean is something's getting into the blood and the lymph, the fluids. The body is a hemodynamic system. It's, the fluids are moving, and as the fluids are moving, they're delivering nutrients and they're delivering oxygen, and they're detoxifying, they're removing toxins, and they're generating an electrical charge. As the fluids are moving, they're delivering nutrition to the cells, what we call the mighty 90 essential nutrients. This is Dr. Wallach's brilliant insight that the mighty 90 essential nutrients need to be delivered to the cells or the cells are not going to be able to do their business and that's when sickness shows up. The blood needs to be able to deliver oxygen because like the mighty 90 essential nutrients, the cells need oxygen. They need to breathe. The blood and the lymph need to clean toxins out. The, the cells need a clean place to do their work. And as the fluids, the blood and the lymph are circulating, they're generating an electrical charge. Behind all disease, you will find stagnation of this fluid. That means no or less micronutritional delivery to the cells. That means less oxygen delivery to the cell. That means less detoxification from the cell. And that means lower electrical charge. Now, do you hear a doctor involved in any of this? Do you hear a prescription for any of this? There's no prescription that can cure this problem. There's no doctor strategy that can cure this problem. The one common factor that the disease state has over the ease state is stagnation, and that's the causes of cancer and heart disease and diabetes and everything else. Actually, no one has cancer, and no one has heart disease, and no one has diabetes. Those are just words. Those are just nomenclature. Those are just names. What people have are the symptoms of cancer, the signs of heart disease the manifestation of diabetes. Not the word, we have the symptoms. And the symptoms are pain and inflammation, and that always means immune and defense. Immune system and a defensive, resp or defensive response. And it all follows stagnation and clogging. If you want to get to the root of disease, you got to address the stagnation and clogging. All disease is stagnation and clogging of fluid, whether we're talking outside the body, on the skin, or inside the body. Thus, stimulation and movement the results of physical exertion, as well as nutrition and oxygen, are the physical ways to address all illness, whether it's a rash, or whether it's a pimple, or whether it's cancer, or whether it's anything else. Physical movement, moving the body. Moving the body helps move fluids. Nutrition, the job of nutrition really at the end of the day is to facilitate the movement of electrical energy. That's what vitamins and minerals do. They facilitate the movement of electrons, electrical energy. And then, of course, oxygenation, which is also very stimulating. Move the body correctly, which includes relaxing it. Breathe the body correctly, which includes exhalation, as well as inhalation. And feed the body correctly, which includes caloric restriction and fasting. What we don't eat is as important as what we do. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got, uh, I don't know, lines are filling up here, but we do have a line open for you at 8... Uh, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a couple minutes. 
If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we can help you. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products or join the Brightside Ben team, please call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. We're talking skin. We're talking health. We're talking about the most uh, the common element of all illness, of all disease, whether it's high blood pressure, or diabetes, or cancer, or heart disease, or zits, or rashes, or whatever, behind all health challenges, you'll find a body out of ease. The body goes out of ease. The body falls out of ease into dis-ease when the fluids stagnate, when the fluids clog up, when they clump up. Move the body correctly. That involves relaxation as well as exercise and movement. Breathe the body correctly. That includes exhalation as well as inhalation. And feed the body correctly, which includes the mighty 90 essential nutrients and includes less food, caloric restriction, fasting. It's just as important what we don't eat, or what we don't eat is just as important as what we do eat. And did I say anything here about drugs or doctors? Is there any drugs or doctors involved in this equation? No, they're not required. Drugs and doctors are not required for the body to be healthy. No pharmacists are required. No Obamacare is required. No medical model, period. Health is not medicine. Medicine is not health. This conflation of these two separate ideas does not serve us. It does not serve humanity. It is anti-humanity. Do you need doctors? Yes, of course. If you get hit by a car, you have some kind of trauma, you need somebody to stitch you up, praise God that we have uh, kind, heroic men and women who will stitch us back up in a surgical procedure. The problem is when medicine interferes with our day-to-day health. Medicine gets between health. The word medicine comes from the Latin medius, med, middle, medium, which means in between. A doctor is a middleman. A doctor and medicine and representatives of the medical model are middlemen who intercede with the gods, of he- the gods of healing, like priests used to intercede with the one God. But in the dark ages, in the medieval times, priests said, oh, you do whatever you want, just give us your house when you die, and then uh, 10% of your salary or 10% of your earnings, and we'll talk to God for you, because we're plugged into God. Well, today we don't have, we're not, we're not silly like those crazy, silly medieval people. We're really smart and high tech. So we have doctors instead of priests. And they say, oh, don't worry what you're doing because we'll intercede with the health gods for you. It's the same idea. The bright side is about doing this ourselves. The bright side is a message of empowerment. It's about cutting out the middleman and addressing our health challenges. This is what Dr. Glidden means. He says, fire your MD. Fire the middleman. You don't need a middleman. You could do it yourself. The cause of disease is stagnation specifically fluid stagnation, specifically blood and lymph, and maybe even bile stagnation. That's it, folks. It's true about the whole body, and it's true about the skin. Whether your skin's aging rapidly, you're getting wrinkles, dark spots, the skin is thinning, if you have psoriasis, eczema, or whatever, acne, rosacea, the fluids in the body, and then the cells, first the fluids in the body, are not doing their business, they're stagnating, they're clumping, they're coagulating, and then the cells are not doing their business because they're starving and they're suffocating and they're toxic. Everything starts to slow down. Even if cells are dividing too rapidly, which does happen, or they're secreting too much fiber, that in itself is a result of a cell not getting fed, not getting oxygenated, and not getting cleaned out. And that all has to do with stagnation. So to improve or to get better, to get healthy, all we got to do is improve the dynamic nature of the body, and that's why getting healthier inside and out involves stimulation, activation, and turning things on. Stagnation is the enemy. Movement is our friend. And this movement, this activation, this turning on the production of cells and all the things that they need to do involves, initially, if you want to maximize it, it involves destabilization. We call that exercise, X arc, destabilization. In terms of the skin, it's the same idea. You gotta destabilize skin cells in order for them to be able to produce the collagen and the moisture factors and to divide correctly. And there's different ways to destabilize skin cells. We call destabilization of skin cells or skin cell exercise exfoliation. And there's lots of ways to do it. The standard way of exfoliation is to use exfoliating agents. Exfoliating agents, scrubby beads, for example. You got two forms of exfoliate, exfoliating agents. You got the synthetic ones and you got the natural ones. The synthetic ones are round and they tend to be made out of plastic like materials. They call them polymers. Usually there's something like polyethylene or maybe polyurethane, the kind of stuff they make plastic cups out of. 
These days, these scrubby beads are actually becoming an environmental hazard. They're washing up on beaches and uh, because they're so small, they're hard to filter out of, they, they don't get filtered out of the water supply. You can also use natural exfoliators. I like seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, even rice. Small little pieces of rice can be uh, good natural exfoliators. Coffee and sugar make good scrubs. Salt makes a good scrub. Tomorrow we'll talk about some recipes for how you can make your own scrub. And then we'll talk about a vitamin that can be helpful for exfoliation. And then we'll continue talking about alpha hydroxy acids and how you can use alpha hydroxy acids, whether natural sources from aloe, noni, honey, all good sources of alpha hydroxy acids, or whether you get them uh, from a pharmacy or, or even off the internet, glycolic acid, lactic acid. We'll talk about how you can make your own and how you can use them as we continue talking skin health on the bright side. I want to get to some phone calls here. We've got full lines. Uh, if, uh, 844-236-6010 is our number. When somebody drops off, that's, uh, that's your opportunity to give us a shout. Let's go off to New York and welcome Isaac to the bright side. What's up, Isaac? Isaac, 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 going once, going Hi, twice. Uh, oh, hey, Isaac. Hello. Hey, buddy. What's up, man? I'm okay. Thank you. Um, it was a pleasure to talk to you and ask you my f question, which is, sure. if someone who is um, already taking prescription drugs also takes the 90 essential nutritional supplement on a daily basis, will the drugs and its toxi toxicity prevent the nutritional supplements to detoxify and nourish that person's no. body? Nutrients help drugs work better. So if you're on a med, that's a great question, by the way, Isaac. If, uh, if you're on a prescription medication, for the most part, your nutrition is going to make your drugs more effective. It'll create a situation where you don't need as many drugs. Now, there are some, and actually one major exception, and that's between vitamin K and, uh, and blood thinners. Vitamin K is a coagulating vitamin, and blood thinners thin the blood, and, and vitamin K will counteract some of the effects of things like warfarin or blood thinning drugs, Eliquis, or whatever you're using. So if you are on a blood thinning drug, that's not a reason not to use vitamin K, but you may have to adjust your blood, the dose of your blood thinning drug. Doctors will tell you, oh, don't eat broccoli. Don't eat green leafy vegetables because they have vitamin K. It'll counteract your drugs. Well, that's not my take on it. My take on it is you need your vitamin K for other things, not just for clotting the blood, but for bone health, for example, for wound healing. For example, you also need broccoli, obviously, and green leafy vegetables, which are loaded with nutrition. For any doctor to tell you not to eat broccoli or green leafy vegetables because it'll interfere with your poison, I mean your drugs, that tells you all you need to know about the utter bankruptcy, the, the intellectual bankruptcy of the medical model. So uh, with the exception of vitamin K and warfarin and blood thinning drugs, drug, uh, uh, nutritional supplementation will help your medicine work better. They'll alleviate or at least minimize some of the toxicity associated with drugs, so some of the side effects associated with drugs. And at the end of the day, you may actually need less drugs if you're using good nutrition. Maybe you may not even need drugs at all. Thanks for your call, Isaac. Appreciate it. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got a line open for you. 844-236-6010. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got a line open for you, 844-236-6010. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Longevity products, head over to my website, brightsideben.com, and call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. From the New England Journal of Medicine, obese people unlikely to achieve normal body weight. This is an article from... Uh, this, this month, this week's New England Journal of Medicine, patients may ask about a widely reported study suggesting that few obese people will achieve a normal body weight, and the findings appear in the American Journal of Public Health. Apparently, doctors are mystified about how to handle obesity. They can't figure it out. So they say obese people are never going to get back to their normal weight. Well, what are they missing? Obesity... The inability to lose weight is a classic sign of the body's stress response. Under conditions of emergency or stress, the body will protect us by keeping the weight on. Once again, we find disease, stagnation, slow, slowing down, stress, some kind of burden on the body behind illness. Obesity is a manifestation of long-term activation of the survival or stress response. How do you address obesity the same way you address pimples or heart disease or anything else? You calm the body down with the mighty 90 essential nutrients with oxygen by not putting the bad food in and by putting the good stuff in and by movement, by detoxification and oxygenation. It really is simple, folks. 
Good health is simple. Let us show you how easy it can be. Our number 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. Let's go to Mitchell in Texas. What's up, buddy? Welcome to the Bright Side. Yes, hello, Ben. I hey. gave a call last week, and this is a follow-up because I couldn't call back on the day you, you said to call back. Okay. Um, so the concern is as to whether or not the longevity supplement program that I'm on has the Menic Q7 vitamin K2 that I've heard is necessary mm -mm. to keep the calcium supplement like is in OsteoFX from hardening the arteries, <coughs> Excuse and even me. whether that is true. Uh, vitamin K is involved in keeping calcium in the bones, if that's what you mean. However, calcification of tissues usually involves blood that is the same thing, blood that's dirty, blood that's filled with stuff, and so the calcium supersaturates or, or crystallizes out. That's what you're talking about when you have stones and such. So calcium metabolism and, and controlling calcium and calcification is much more than just using vitamin K. However, vitamin K is a critical, critical nutrient and a very misunderstood nutrient. Uh, I'm not sure which longevity product you're talking about when you say do the longevity products have vitamin K2 in them. I don't believe, and I think the Beyond Tangy Tangerine might have it and also the, uh, the uh, Ultimate Daily may have some vitamin K, but I'm not sure if it's vitamin K2. I'd have to look into it, that. No, it, well, what it says is menta, menti, uh, let me see. Here, Meni right menaquinone? Men Menatetranone, yes. Menaquinone. Uh, well, this says menatetranone, M-E-N-A-T-E-T-R-E-N-O-N-E. -E -E -E. Okay, well, I don't think that's vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is menaquinone, menaquinone 7. Um, is the technical name for vitamin K2. Meta, me, say that again, metatetraquinone? Menatetranone. Menatetranone. E-R-E-N-O-N-E. Menatetranone is a, a, a different form of vitamin K. It's not vitamin K2. Um, it's, or you know what? It is one of the forms. It is actually vitamin K. Yes, it is. It is. I apologize. It is a form of vitamin K2. Menatetranone. Does that answer your question? Well, so so is that because um, so, what I've heard is and what I've read a little bit online is that this special form of vitamin K2 helps prevent With osteoporosis? any calcium supplement that's taken from going to the arteries and harming yeah. them as yeah. opposed to going to the bone. That's it prevents it from going to the arteries, you're saying? Yes. Well, yes, that's the job of yes, vitamin yes. K2. That's one of the jobs of vitamin K2 is to magnetically keep calcium in the bone. However, if your body is toxic, meaning your blood is toxic, which is what we've been talking about all day, which we talk about every day, really, what's going to happen is one of the ways the body deals with that toxicity is calcium will leak out of the bones. Toxicity is really one of the manifestations of toxicity is acid. Calcium neutralizes acid. Are you with me here? W work with me, yeah. okay? Yeah. So, I'm with so you. when we talk about acidity in the when we talk about toxicity in the blood, we're talking about acidity. Calcium neutralizes acid, and it's one of the ways the body cleans itself out. So you can take all the vitamin K two you want, but if you're eating lots of sugar or you got digestive problems, stuff is leaking into your blood inappropriately. You've got the stagnation thing that we were just talking about. You can take all the vitamin K you want, but the body is compensating for the toxicity by releasing calcium, and the vitamin K may help a little bit, but you're still going to have a problem. Are you with me? You can't I'm use... I'm completely with you. Okay, good. So what you want to do, what you want to think about is keeping the blood clean. It's always going to be the same thing. And how do you do that? Oxygenation is probably the best thing you could do because oxygen will also detoxify the blood, so the body doesn't have to, the bones don't have to release calcium. So making sure you're breathing correctly, make sure you're moving the body, make sure you're reducing your sugar intake. Sugar is a toxin to the blood. After a small amount is in there, the rest is a toxin to the blood. And then of course all the digestive health strategies. So I'm not saying vitamin K is not helpful or important. It is. It's very helpful and very important. But as long as you have toxicity in the blood you're still going to have that calcification problem, whether it's in the kidneys or, or whether it's in the arteries or whether it's forming plaques. Whatever it is, it's a sign of toxicity. Remember, we're simplifying here. Health is simple. Clean the blood. How do you clean the blood? With movement, with oxygen, and by making sure you're eating correctly and getting your Mighty 90 essential nutrients. Okay? So, so you normally talk about sort of whatever minimum amounts are sort of necessary per body weight and that kind of thing. So can I assume that the amount of vitamin K 
in um, in BTT is sort of um, is giving you enough. Kind of me meant to sort of be enough to. And there's no way to know the answer. You know what? With vitamin K especially, but with all vitamins, but the fatty vitamins and especially vitamin K, which is probably the trickiest, vitamin K and vitamin D are the two trickiest vitamins to know how much you need because of their multiple, the, uh, number one, the multiple effects they have on the body and also the multiple forms they take in the body. There's many forms of vitamin K and many forms of vitamin D. It's hard to know the exact dose that you need. You're going to have to go by your symptoms. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine will absolutely give you the minimum, so you'll at least have the minimum wage, but exactly how much you're going to need, there's no way to know. And does longevity have a sort of a, a K2 additional, so in case I need it or whatever, you know what? out that I I got to apologize, more. Mitchell. I don't know the answer to that question. I know that there's some in the Beyond Tangy, and there's probably some in the Ultimate Daily, but I can't tell you if uh, you can meet your vitamin K needs with any of the longevity products, with the exception of those two products, the Ultimate Daily and the Beyond Tangy, which will get you some basic amounts of vitamin K. I'll, I'll look into that for you. I'll, let me, let me, give me a couple days and let me look into that for you. And I'll announce it. I'll, I'll talk about it on the air. Great. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate your call, Mitchell. Take care, man. Okay. 844 is our number. Larry in Indiana. What is up? Welcome to the bright side. Hi, Ben. Hey. Uh, I have a question about um, I told you call screener uh, pregnenolone, but I meant progesterone. Okay. They're, they're uh, similar. Okay. I was, I was reading um, articles. I think you even put something out about using progesterone cream, uh, men, older men using yeah. progesterone cream. Yeah, and I've been using, I've been, I've been working with progesterone cream now since I, since my pharmacy school days 30 years ago, and it's amazing stuff for men and for women. Hang on, uh, we got to take a break, and we'll talk some progesterone, uh, and also progesterone for men when we come back, okay? So don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 at brightsideben.com. Got lots and lots of archived information. You can also head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com, which we update regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you to Robert Lundgren and Jaunty Collier, who set those websites up for us. If you're interested in purchasing any longevity products or joining me in my mission to help educate the world about how important a good nutritional supplement program can be, you can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Of course, you can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. All right, we're talking to Larry in Indiana about progesterone. Larry, you there, ma'am? Yes, yes. Okay. I, okay. I hear a lot about progesterone for women, but you never hear sure. about it. For you men. never hear about it for men, right? Well, men, you know, men have progesterone issues as well as females do. Here's the deal with progesterone. It's a relaxing hormone. It's a non-toxic hormone. It antagonizes the stress and inflammatory effects of estrogen, which is a which is a movement hormone, an activity hormone. Estrogen is involved in dividing cells dividing in the formation of a, of a, in the development of a baby or a fetus in the womb. Estrogen is also associated with fluid accumulation. Est estrogen is associated with cancer, and progesterone helps counteract estrogen. Estrogen is a stress hormone. Progesterone is a relaxing hormone. If you have seizure disorders or high blood pressure or anxiety issues, progesterone can be very helpful, whether you're a man or a woman. Progesterone, uh, if you have low levels of progesterone, you may be more at risk for prostate cancer. You may have more uh, risk for inflammatory diseases. You may have a higher risk for weight gain. Estrogen, estrogen or low levels of progesterone or high levels of estrogen are associated with weight gain. Uh, they're associated with depression. It, uh, there's a condition called gynecomastia, if you've ever heard of that. That means man boobs. You know what I'm talking about? Those are associated, oh, yeah. with, those are associated with excess estrogen. Uh, erectile problems, sexual dysfunction are associated with excess estrogen. Bone loss, muscle loss, weakness, hair loss, all of these are associated with excess estrogen. And a low libido can be associated with excess estrogen. Estrogen is a birth control type of substance. Estrogen is an anti-sex substance and progesterone pro 
gestation hormone is a fertility hormone. It's a sexuality hormone. It's a muscle building hormone. So progesterone is important for both men and women. It's especially important for the relaxation response. And as we spent all day talking, uh, we spent today pretty much the whole first half of this program talking about how the stress response is behind disease. Well, nothing says stress response more than, more than estrogen, and progesterone helps antagonize or balance out estrogen dominance or excess amounts of estrogen. Now, if you don't want to, it's, it's a little difficult to get progesterone in a product. Uh, in my pharmacy, I used to compound progesterone cream, and I would make a 10% progesterone cream with real progesterone. Now, if you go uh, on the internet or if you go to drugstores, you may find a 2% progesterone cream with a prescription, but you really need more progesterone in my experience. If you don't want to deal with the, if you don't want to go the prescription route, pregnenolone, which is the first substance you were talking about, that's kind of a non-prescription alternative to progesterone. Uh, it's not quite as effective, but you'll still get some nice, nice relaxation effects, muscle building effects. Isn't it interesting, by the way, Larry, that, that all the good stuff, the muscle building, the sexuality, the healthy head of hair, bone strength and muscle strength, isn't it interesting that they're all associated with relaxation and the relaxation hormones? You, you notice this? Uh, right? So yeah, keeping the body in a relaxed state is so, so important, with the exception of, a, of quick bursts of stress. That's what we call exercise. Quick bursts of destabilization and then long, luscious relaxation. That's how the body likes it. Progesterone is a relaxation substance, as is pregnenolone, and as is, by the way, DHEA, which many people have heard of, or now they have something called 7-keto DHEA, which has less side effects than the DHEA. So between progesterone, which is my favorite way to, uh, my favorite way to access this anti-estrogen effect, or pregnenolone or DHEA, you get lots of benefits for both men and for women. And as far as... Uh, seizure disorders, uh, autoimmune diseases go, and any kind of stress response, think progesterone or pregnenolone or DHEA. The uh, brand I'm using, uh, I don't know if I can mention it, but uh, it's got 500 milligrams of progesterone per ounce and 22 milligrams per 1.3 grams. Yeah, that's, not, that's, not, that's a trace. I'm talking, you said how many, how many milligrams per ounce? 500 got, milligrams? Uh, 500 milligrams Okay, so let's do the math here. 500 milligrams per ounce, which is 30 grams. So you're talking about 1,000 milligrams, one gram per 60 grams. That's like about 1.5% or so, a little less, 1.4%. I'm talking about using a 5 or 10%. I like a 10%. So you're really getting a – and that's the problem with most of these products. That's why you have to have a compounding pharmacist make it for you uh, because you're not going to really get a very good dose of progesterone. Where did you get that product, by the way? Uh, I got it from the health food store. and it's, oh, yeah. uh, Can I mention the brand name? Yeah, sure. It's Source Naturals. Is it real progesterone or is it yam? It says natural progesterone cream and it says uh, USP from soy. Okay, so that's progesterone, uh, but it's only about 1% or 1.5% or so. So that's a pretty pretty weak dose. That's What's that? About half a teaspoon twice a day. Yeah, half a teaspoon is uh, 2.5 milligrams. So you're getting 5 milligrams a day. And there's 500 milligrams per 30. So you're getting about roughly around 100 milligrams a day. It's not going to be enough progesterone, in my opinion. Okay. okay. Are you noticing that you feel more relaxed? Are you noticing, uh, you noticing you're sleeping better or better sexual performance or anything like that? Um, I noticed a little weight reduction around the waist. Okay. Well, that's all good signs. But I would be try, try a little more, see what happens. You okay. certainly aren't going to overdose. The, the side effect of progesterone is you get drowsy. And that's if you use way, way, way too much. That's the only side effect. It's, com it's almost completely non-toxic. Okay? Great. All right, buddy. Thank you so much, Larry. Thanks for your call. Okay, Bruce in Connecticut. What's up, buddy? Hey, Ben. It's Bruce. Uh, yes, sir. I just said, hey, Bruce. How you doing, man? Oh, oh, I'm doing well, thanks. Welcome back. Over the weekend on the, uh, on the web, specifically Facebook posts, a post came by, and I really wanted to ask you about the question of discernment and, and making healthy choices. Dr. Robert O. Young, who pitches uh, alkaline eating, alkaline diet, said one of the top foods to never eat is eggs. And he said once you crack open an egg, white, um, the, the yolk biologically transformed into 37.5 million pathological bacteria and yeast. And he says it's worse than smoking cigarettes. I really... Would love I'm to not, I'm thing. not, uh, that doesn't sound right. I, you know, I like Robert, I've met Robert, Dr. Young, and uh, 
I liked his books. You know, I don't like, I don't agree with everything he says. Here's the problem with eggs, though. Anytime in, food, in the world of food and in the world of nutrition, there's an interesting relationship between the power of a food, the power and the effectiveness of a nutritional supplement, and its instability. The more energetically active a food is, and protein, especially egg, is super duper energetically active, the more unstable it's going to be. And when I say unstable, I especially mean unstable to oxygen and unstable to air. So Dr. Young's point is well taken. Once you crack the egg, you're definitely going to, you're going to be, the, the yolk, which is the active part of the egg, or the most active part of the egg, is going to be contacting the oxygen, and it's going to begin to oxidize. The same thing is true about fats. And by the way, eggs are loaded with good fats. So you have this balance that you've got to work with. Yes, it's true that once food contact, an active food contacts oxygen, it's going to become destabilized, but that doesn't mean you don't want to eat active foods. You just got to eat them quickly. You don't want to let your eggs sit around, and you don't want to let your oil sit around for that matter, and you want, don't want to heat them, or at least you don't want to heat them too much, which is why raw eggs are going to be the best. Or if you're going to heat your eggs, soft boil or poach them, don't heat them too much. Are you going to be introducing free radicals into your system? Probably, but that's why you have antioxidants. So it's this balance that you got to work with. The fact of the matter is eggs are loaded with vitamin D. They're loaded with good fats. They're loaded with vitamin A. They're loaded with zinc. They're loaded with B vitamins. They're loaded with inositol. They're loaded with all the and protein. They're loaded with everything. They're the perfect life form. Uh, they're the perfect uh, food for life. So to not eat eggs because you're, the yolk is going to oxidize, and I don't know where he gets his information about the yolk turning into bacteria. He says it turns into bacteria, literally? He says the yolk biologically transforms into 37.5 million patho uh, pathological bacteria in yeast. How can, uh, how, can a, <coughs> excuse me, how can a yolk transform into bacteria? It doesn't even make sense. So I'm not sure either you're reading it incorrectly or, or Dr. Young is, I don't understand. Well, how, well, I, how, well, how can I, a yolk turn into bacteria? Yeah. Well, I forwarded it to you. I thought you did. Forward, yeah, let yeah. me look at it, and then I'll read it, and I'll talk about it either tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, eggs, are would... eggs are an amazing food, and it just seems tragic to me to avoid them because of there are some problems with it because it's a living food, and all living foods are going to have problems. So uh, to avoid eggs and all the wonderful nutritional value that you get from them because of the I interactions with oxygen and their instability, it just seems like a waste to me, and that's just my opinion. All right, Bruce, i got to go. That's the end of the program. Thanks so much for your call. Send that email. Uh, send me that Facebook post, and I'll address it on the air. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you so much for listening, friends. Tomorrow we'll continue talking skin health, and we'll talk some recipes for exfoliating scrubs and exfoliating cleansers and toners that you can use as uh, we continue talking skin health on the bright side. Check out my website, PharmacistBen.com, and if you want to purchase any of my skin health products, go to TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Thanks a lot, folks. Have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.